Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Brass Monkey X. So today I'm going to begin work on Project Juggernaut. Now, I, I don't know if you guys have seen my previous videos. I talked about it a while ago. I bought a bunch of parts for it. I have all the parts. I just haven't had a chance to get around to building this rifle yet. Um, if you want to check it out, there is a video on Project Juggernaut, what it is and what all the parts are that I bought for it. You can go check that out. It, it's in my playlists. Um, it should have its own playlist under Project Juggernaut. If not, you can just go to my homepage and scroll down and find it. It shouldn't be too far back, maybe like six months ago or so. But um, today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I prep parts to receive Duracoat when I Duracoat my parts. So on this project, we're going to be painting these two receivers here the upper and the lower. We're going to be using this, this crimson color from Duracoat. Now, you don't want to just spray this stuff right on without doing anything to your parts first. Because even from the factory, these parts look clean, but they're not. They're, there's little bits of grease in there. There's, there's all kinds of problems with these that you need to clean them up before you can go ahead and Duracoat. Now, before we even get to the cleaning stage though, what I like to do is, I like to take a little abrasion to the parts so that the Duracoat has something to adhere to a little bit better. Because these finishes on these parts can be really smooth and really slick. And if you, don't, if you don't sand them down a little bit and rough them up, the Duracoat, even Cerakote, it doesn't matter what kind of coating you're using. You could be using... Uh, rattle cans if you want like it, it, it doesn't matter rust-oleum whatever you want to use you don't want to do it on a smooth surface because it's going to have a tough time adhering to that so you want to scuff it up now as you can see i have here a just a basic anderson lower and my upper here is a arrow precision extra large upper because it this project that i'm working on is going to be a 50 beowulf so i needed the extra large upper um you can see there's a difference with the two finishes here. Now, I, I couldn't tell you exactly what the finishes are on these things, but even by feel, you can feel the arrow precision is a little smoother. Um, it, it's probably a little more durable than the arrow precision is, so it might be a little tougher to scuff this one up. We're going to see. Um, now, if you're lucky enough, to have like a sandblaster, the best thing to do is just sandblast this finish right off of there and start with the bare metal. Okay, you start with the bare metal. You don't have to prime it when doing a Duracoat, but if I took it down to bare metal, I'd probably prime it first and then Duracoat it. But we're not lucky enough to have a uh, sandblaster here in my garage. So what I like to use is Depending on the finish, sometimes with like the Andersons, with some of the more affordable um, parts, you're, you're going to have a little bit of a cheaper finish on there. And something like some steel wool could work. So you could try that. All you're going to do is really just just rub it on there. Just scratch it up a little bit. And you can, you can see, let me turn the light on, maybe you can see a little bit better. As I start to do that, you see the colors changing a little bit on there? It's because it's it's starting to scuff it up a little bit. I mean, it, it's not doing much. It's just on a microscopic level, you want this finish to open up. Like, you want the pores to open up on the finish so that your Duracoat will adhere to it. Now, if you find that the steel wool isn't going to be tough enough, which I know it's not going to work on this one, like, that's going to do absolutely nothing to that. So... What you can use, which I prefer to the steel wool actually, is something like this. You get like a Scotch-Brite pad. They come in different grits. I don't even know if you'd call it grit on a Scotch-Brite pad, but like this one's ultra-fine. This one's moderate. Um, you could start with the ultra-fine and see if that works and then move up to the moderate, which is what I'm going to do. So off-camera, guys, I'm just going to, I'm probably just going to pause it here and then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get the abrasion done on these. I'm gonna start with this one here, the ultra fine. And again, if this doesn't cut it, I'm gonna move up to the moderate and we'll see how that works. 
And then after I get that done, I'll restart the video and I'll show you guys the next step in this process of getting your parts prepped for Doracoat. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I just finished with the abrasion on both of these receivers. As you can see, the parts there, they're, when you're done, they're going to look a little cloudy like that. That's what you want. That shows that the abrasion was working. And that the finish on your parts was starting to come off. Okay, now you only want to do the parts that you're going to be coating. Like, you're only going to be doing the outside of the receiver here. You don't want to do anything on the inside. I mean, these things are made to such tight tolerances that you don't want to mess with that anyway. But, there you can see it worked on both of them. Um, now, I did use the Ultra Fine on the Anderson lower. And then I tried it on the upper receiver here, the arrow upper, and it didn't really work as well. So I did have to use the, the moderate one on the arrow precision upper because the uh, this receiver had a had a better a little bit of a better finish on it. But um what we're gonna do next, guys, is you wanna get your parts completely cleaned and degreased. Now, there's two different methods you can use. If your parts are small enough, you can use something like this. I happen to have an ultrasonic cleaner here. Now, my one of these will fit. I think it's the lower receiver, the upper receiver. I don't know. One of them fits in there, and the other one doesn't. I think the upper receiver will fit. The lower receiver is just slightly too big, so I'm gonna have to clean that one by hand. But all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dump this into my ultrasonic cleaner. I use this stuff here. It's uh, it, it's all by Hornady. The, the ultrasonic cleaner is Hornady. The solution is made by Hornady. They make several different solutions. One is for cleaning gun parts. Uh, they make another one for cleaning um, cases because I, I like to do some reloading too on the side. But uh, just make sure you're using the right cleaner for it. The instructions are on the back of how to mix it. So for every 20 ounces of water, you're going to use half an ounce of solution. So it's basically, I, I basically just fill this thing up. I go somewhere in between the minimum and the maximum line on there. So it tells you how far you can fill it. I try to stay right in the middle and then I, I basically just use a cap full of that stuff. Um, if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner like this, what you can do is just clean it by hand. All you need is some warm soapy water, use dish soap preferably something like like Dawn, something like that, and it should be fine, which is what I'm going to have to do with the lower anyway because it won't fit in here. But let me go ahead and get this started. I'm, I'm not going to run it for too long. I'm only going to put it in there for like five minutes. Honestly, I don't even need to heat, use the heat setting either. So I'm just going to set it in there for five minutes, uh, clean this one up, and then I'm going to go to my slop sink, clean this one up with some soapy water, and I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so our parts have been thoroughly cleaned now. Um, like I said, I ran the upper through the ultrasonic cleaner, and I did this one by hand, the lower. Um, after you get them thoroughly cleaned, you want to rinse them off real good. Make sure there's no soap left on them. Give them a real good rinsing. And then what you're going to do is you're going to let them air dry. Don't use a paper towel to dry them off because you're going to get little pieces of lint and stuff on there. Now, if you do have a lint-free towel, like a microfiber cloth or something, and you want to dry it off that way if you're a little impatient, that's fine. Go ahead and try that. Or what I'm going to do is I have my compressor, and I have one of these here. So I'm just going to blow them dry with this. But this is what they're going to look like after you clean them off. Okay. They're basically going to look like they did before you clean them, but you'll you'll know that the abrasion was enough. You can tell if you look here, you can see the paint started coming off on the letters here. It's a little faded. I know it's hard to see on the camera here, but like this one, this one's really difficult to read. Like that, that's how you know you definitely sanded it down enough. Like you, you don't have to go crazy with it, guys. It's just enough to get the Duracoat to stick. And then clean it off real good so that there's no grease or anything on there. Then the next step, you're just going to let this dry. 
let it air dry or like I said if, if you have a microfiber towel go ahead and do it that way or I'm gonna use this here and then there's one more step to prep until we can Duracoat so let me get these dried off and once again I'll be right back okay guys so I just finished up with the last step of the process here which is masking tape you want to mask off all the areas where you don't want to get Duracoat I mean, obviously, all you're going to need is like some masking tape. It doesn't matter what kind you use. And you need some kind of really sharp knife. Like I have this X-Acto knife. Well, X-Acto style knife by Cobalt. Um, it came in this whole kit here. This thing's great. Um, you could use an X-Acto knife. Hell, you could use a pocket knife as long as it's sharp enough. But you're going to need that for when you put the tape on here. You're going to want to cut around the edge here just to peel it off. You want a nice clean edge. You don't want it looking all sloppy. But the main reason why you're doing this is you don't want to get any Duracoat down in the internals there. Because like I said, it's <clears throat> especially in the upper, you want to make sure you get this masked off real good. Because the tolerances inside the receiver are so tight that you, you don't want to gunk it up with anything. You don't want to get the Duracoat in there. So make sure you're covering up like your uh, ejection port here. Make sure you cover up the back here as well. Um, this here, the forward assist hole. When I paint this, I'm just going to go ahead and stuff that with like some uh, some some kind of like tissue paper or something. And that'll be fine. Same thing here with the uh, magazine release hole. Again, I'm just going to stuff that with some tissue paper or something. And that should be all right. Because that, that's a pain in the butt to try and tape that. But you want to make sure you get like definitely get back here where there's threads. Same thing here where the barrel thread's on. You want to make sure you cover up those threads. You don't want to gunk up the threads at all. But that's it, guys. Um, you can do the mag well, too, if you want. It's not necessary. I, I do a little overkill here. You don't really have to do that. I also go in and I put some tape on the inside here where all these holes are. That way nothing gets sprayed in there. But, I, again, if it, it shouldn't be... You're not using a high-pressure sprayer to do this even if you're using rattle cans it's not that much pressure where you really need to go that extra step but i i like to do it just in case just to be safe but that's the last step guys is you're going to put some masking tape on there and then you're good to go you're all set you can go ahead and you could start your duracoat so that's about it guys um i'm not going to go ahead and do a duracoat video for this project i'm not going to show you me dora coating all these parts there's too many parts to do just the receivers are going to be done in red and then a bunch of parts are going to be done in brown and i want to take my time with this one i want to enjoy it i don't want to have to film it while i'm doing it i've done other dora coating videos if you want to check them out you can go check out my playlists you can check out any one of my ar-15 builds they all have dora coating videos i think um if you can't find them there, just you can go to my homepage and just scroll down my videos list. You'll, you'll find the door coding videos. But that's about it, guys. I just wanted to show you guys how I prep my parts for door coat. I mean, you can use this method for any type of finish you want to do. If you're Cerakoting, again, if you're using rattle cans, just doing a Rust-Oleum job, whatever. This is how you should prep your parts. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you next time.